Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Basketball Australia Tidy HQ webinar, our first. Um, this will be a bit of an introduction to Tidy HQ, a uh, bit of a background story as to where it's come from and why I started building it and why I think or we think it'll be really helpful um, for you to use as basketball associations and clubs. Uh, and at a state level, I see there's a few reps from the state level as well. Here, I've got Liam Bednarski from Basketball Australia with us as well, who will help answer any questions and answers. Liam, did you want to give a, a bit of an initial spiel? Yeah, sure. We're really excited to be working with Tidy HQ and the Basketball Network. And we believe the product's going to give a lot of extra features to our uh, states, associations and clubs. So really excited. Uh, I've been working on it for a long period this year and uh, looking forward to getting stuck into using the solution and uh, having people actually get their hands on it and starting to talk to Isaac and his team. Great. Thank you. So a bit of a background. Um, my name's Isaac Dury. I'm the CEO and founder of Tidy HQ. I started building Tidy probably more than a decade ago now. Uh, it was initially just a hobby project. I was on a, a range of committees. I was very frustrated with the experiences um, that I had with, with coming on to committees um, and being a volunteer administrator at various levels, um, included football clubs, um, cricket, basketball, um, and a few other uh, organizations. And regardless of the sport, regardless of what activity we were pursuing, the handover experience, the, the succession, the, the level of governance at these organizations was pretty poor. Um, even though we often turned over enough to be a small business, um, we didn't always have the tools that I expected to, to run these sorts of um, operations, especially with the sort of money involved with it. Um, and it started to come as no surprise as to why every year in the paper there's a treasurer that runs off with money or various other governance issues that come um, with this world. So I started building Tidy HQ. I couldn't find what I wanted when I wanted, went to my peak sporting bodies, my state body, my um, even my local state government. I went to various training sessions, spoke with way too many consultants who told me how to run the organisation, which a lot of it was, of course, we need to run more meetings, of course, we need more volunteers, of course, we need more sponsors, but I wanted the tools to, to help me do that. Um, I couldn't find what I wanted at the budget um, that I needed at that. So I started building Tidy. Uh, since then, it's grown arms and legs and we're in 20 odd countries. We're used by tens of thousands of administrators to do all sorts of things from all the different sports through to car clubs and university groups and law societies and, and everything else that you can imagine that has a membership base and, and a committee running it. This partnership with uh, Sports TG um, and Basketball Australia is pretty special. It's been a long time coming, maybe seven, eight years now. I've been chatting with Sports TG about making this a reality. So I'm really excited about having this happen. I know with basketball, there's often five plus uh, Sports TG accounts that you've got to wrangle with. Um, so I'm really excited that Tidy can bring all of those um, databases into one platform to make life easier for um, communicating to your members and, and managing them as well. So without further ado, I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration as to the, the platform of Tidy HQ. I'll just share my desktop now. So this here is Tidy HQ. Um, if, if you get a login, this is what you, you get to see um, as an administrator. Uh, so down the left-hand side here, there's a range of different modules. A lot of these are optional. Um, so, and they're also permission-based. So not everybody needs access to the finances area or not everyone needs to, um, you know, manage the meetings or what have you. So you can adjust those permissions um, based on the administrators involved. Um, so this here is the dashboard. So it gives me a heads up display as to the calendar for the club. So one of my big pressing issues at the start of every year was getting our social calendar up and going, um, understanding what was going on around the organization, what tasks 
were coming up, me running committee meetings, we'd have uh, regular monthly committee meetings, then we'd have fortnightly, very subcommittees, fundraising, social event committees, um, and those sorts of things where it was very haphazard. And I relied on individuals to, to keep things in check. Whereas this system allows me to have a calendar and we can log in and, and see exactly what's going on. The other big lesson is that we're working with volunteers here for the most part. So for me, I would often log in uh, during the workday, during my lunch break, or when have, when, whenever I got some time to help run the organization. And that's quite usual for, for a lot of these organizations. Um, so having a system that's all on the cloud, that's all on, on the internet means that um, you can work uh, agnostically from each other, but still together to drive the organization in the right direction. So here I can see I've got a, a meeting coming up. Um, we've got this social event, uh, the big 90s pool party coming up on the 17th. There's a bunch of tasks that are happening um, with bits and pieces. I can see money that's coming through the door um, and those sorts of things. I can see how many tasks I have outstanding, how much money we've uh, registered this month and those sorts of things here. Next up, we have our contacts database. So this is where we're pulling in multiple sports CG databases. So one of the big issues for basketball associations is that you've got five plus accounts um, for different competitions and, and what have you. This way, what the system does is it's automatically pulling in multiple sports CG accounts into one place um, to make it easier for you to communicate with people. So this is an unlimited contacts database. So you can have um, uh, as many people as you want in here. When I was part of my basketball association, we struggled with understanding people beyond the players. So it's hard enough getting all our players in one system. Sports CG obviously makes it easier when we're funneling everyone through that for player registration. But what we also wanted to know was who the umpires were, what level of accreditation were they? Uh, what first aid certificates did they have? Who who in local government do we talk to when the gutters need uh, servicing? Um, who our local suppliers are? Who, who at the local sports shop do we get the sponsorship off? All those sorts of other people, um, all the other stakeholders that are involved with the success of your organisation needs to be captured somewhere rather than on a myriad of spreadsheets, which is what we had. So you can import as many people as you want in here. Within a contact profile, uh, you can have as many custom fields as you want. So here we can have all sorts of custom fields. We can have uh, file uploads, we can have date fields, we can have regular text boxes, check boxes. Uh, these are called radio buttons. Um, and as many of these as we want. So lots of clubs um, collect lots of different information. So from first aid certificate details, working with children checks, you name it, um, you can register all this sort of information under a contact. You can also um, keep a track of all the money owed um, by this individual. So you can see here, Sue owes us a total of $195.76. And you can see what she's purchased, uh, which is these two um, pool event tickets, um, as well as a cooking in color ticket. And you can see her history of transactions as well. So you can see all the previous history uh, for that person. So what we're trying to do is continually add more information to these contact profiles so the organization can work smarter um, with things. Back on the contacts database, um, one of the neat features that we have is this advanced filters. So for example, let's say we wanna find everyone that um, says that they're first aid qualified, we can do a search based on um, that criteria. Once we've found that criteria, we can then save this as a smart group, calling them first aid qualified, for example. And anytime anyone matches this particular criteria, they'll automatically be added or subtracted into this group, um, which is a pretty neat function um, for the organization. And you can have as many groups as you want. So, for example, we'd have the 2004 Premiership side uh, or team um, registered in here. And 
we could record all the different names of all the different teams, of all the different umpires, of all the different um, administrators, coaches, etc. cetera. Um, you can collect all that sort of information and timestamp these groups accordingly, which becomes really powerful when it comes to communication and inviting people across. So for example, we want to um, communicate with everyone that's first aid qualified um, so we can say that there's a first aid course on, we can say it's, uh, you know, first aid course on again in November, if I can spell correctly. You can throw in an image from our storage section, which I'll show you in a second, um, making it really, really easy to um, set up a, uh, Oops, let's do this one. Here's an image I've used elsewhere. Um, and you can also have merge tags as well, so you can personalize it. So you can say, hi, Isaac. First aid courses again is on again in November. And we can send out a pretty beautiful looking newsletter really, really quickly um, to, to get that information out. We also sync with MailChimp as well. So many of you I know use MailChimp our system and all those contact groups can sync up with MailChimp audiences. So you can use that service if you wanna send a more fancy um, newsletter campaign. My committees, it was like pulling teeth quite often getting this sort of communication out or it was always through a marketing person, which, you know, had to make it bigger than Ben-Hur to, to get out the door. This way we can get it out um, about the first aid course really, really quickly and we can help spread the load on that front. Uh, events. So a big one for basketball is, say, school camps. So um, this way you can set up all of your um, events like school camps and, and bits and pieces like that um, through this platform. So, And it will sync with your contact groups, which are obviously syncing up with Sports CG as well. So all of those dots are connected for you. Simple things so we can see when, when the camp starts and ends, we can have the, the location of that particular camp, um, the venue description of the event. Um, we can have a schedule. So, you know, camp starts here, um, camp goes there, camp finishes here, et cetera. So you can put all um, timestamps on these sorts of things as well. Um, I'd just like to add that this is the, a feature that we're really excited by, just being able to make that clear distinction between domestic basketball competition data and holiday camps, events, programs, and, and representative data within basketball. So Isaac is going through an example of a, of a school holiday camp here, but um, yeah, this is a really, awesome feature that gives you a lot of flexibility to run your own junior domestic programs um, that aren't Aussie Hoops as well as uh, your holiday camps and, pro and other events and programs as well. Yeah, so you can sell your tickets like you'd expect. So you can sell 50 tickets at $50. Um, one of the neat things that you can do is obviously have a description for the ticket sales start and end times as well. So you can sell early bird tickets um, and bits and pieces like that. You can limit the number of tickets um, that can be purchased on a checkout. You can also have uh, requiring a membership, um, which I'll show you in a second. If you're using our system for some of the membership um, options, you can limit membership uh, tickets to membership as well. Um, we're automatically going to categorize all money coming in from this event into a finance category. For this one, we're calling it events. Um, so we're going to shortcut the treasurer's job as well, rather than double handling numbers and, and money. Um, we're automatically going to do some of that work for them as well. And I'll get onto finances next. Um, and you can obviously collect as much information as part of that ticketing process as you want. So, um, you know, what school the kids went to, emergency contact information, dietary requirements, those sorts of bits and pieces you can ask as part of the ticket purchase um, checkout process. We're also going to automatically add these attendees of the event to a contact group. 
So it makes it easier. So everyone that came to this year's school event, presume, um, school camp presumably had a great time. Uh, we're collecting that in a contact group to make it easier to communicate for next year's um, school camp because presumably they want to go again. Um, what we'll also do is collect all the transactions involved that have come through as part of this event, any admin tasks. So we know that getting a great event up involves a whole lot of tasks. So this way we can say, you know, book the Auckland venue, for example, uh, we can assign that to Jordan, we can say, hey, it, you, we need to get it done by next week. We can create that task. So we can start to see everything that's involved with getting this event up. The other neat thing that we can do is duplicate an event. So if I say, hey, Liam, can you run the school, um, school camp? And he says, well, how the hell, where do I start here? He can simply go into last year's event and hit duplicate and he's up and running collection of all the attendees, and you can obviously share it on Facebook or wherever else that you want to. And you get a pretty neat looking um, events page that you can go through and purchase your tickets and check out and go through that um, checkout experience as you'd expect. So that's events. Next we got finances. So we're actually building an integration as we speak to Zero, which should be out in the next few weeks. So if you are using Zero, all this information can sync out into zero as well. Um, lots of my organizations weren't big and hairy enough to, to validate zero. But what I needed as a president of the club was an understanding of the financial position. So the net cash position, who owed us money, who did we owe, um, and generally how we're tra tracking um, as an organization. So that's what this screen's all about, understanding how much money we should have in the bank how we've gone for this period, um, where we're standing with our net position of money owed and money due. And you'll notice the language that we're using is very non-accounting. Uh, it's very simple because the idea is that anyone can be the treasurer. And down here we can see, well, this is where our money's come from this year and this is where it's gone to um, for the year. We can see what transactions, so this is like your online bank statements. I can see exactly where all the transactions have come from. Um, and I can keep a track of invoices, expenses and deposits. Another neat thing that basketball groups are doing is that you can bulk invoice. So let's just pretend you need to invoice everyone that came to the first aid course. Um, so first aid refresher invoice. So it was $120 for the course under the events, we'll categorize it. So I can complete and send an invoice to these three people all at once, which makes it really, really easy. Bulk invoicing um, is something that we make really, really easy um, to send out and, and keep track of. So under invoices expenses, once I've sent that invoice out, I just go to a waiting payment and I can see everyone that we've sent invoices out to that we're still waiting for money. One of the other neat things that we can do is we can do part payments. So this person, for example, we can go into this outstanding invoice. We can see here that he's made two installments of $60 and $30. He's got $30 outstanding from the original $120 uh, event price. So we can add another part payment if he wants. So if he came in and, and gave us another you know, $20 cash, for example, um, and we can send a notification to him if we want, uh, saying that he's paid another $20 and he's got $10 now left outstanding. And we can print off the various receipts of that. Uh, we can print off the invoice if we want to send this out to him, showing exactly what's going on and, and when he's paid us these different amounts of money and all those sorts of things. Um, all of that information is, is really easy to track and maintain with the system. We've got a very rudimentary budgeting system and then we've got reporting. So this is cash book reporting. Um, so again, the idea here is that we're not doing PL, which is what zero is for, which is why we're building that integration for zero. But if you want to know, we are collecting tax, so you can do some BAS 
um, returns and things like that. Uh, but the idea is that I can see how we're tracking for this financial year compared to the same time last year um, and see how we're traveling. We can also share a read-only version of this report. So I can head out to here and share this with the rest of the committee. So I can see a read-only version of this, um, which is great for the AGM or, or your regular committee meetings where you need to share what's going on, but you don't want everyone to have access to the actual numbers. Um, and you can obviously compare it against you know, last financial year, et cetera. Uh, I see we've got a few questions or well, Liam, you've been keeping track of it all. Um, maybe Liam, if you can jump in when you've got some questions or, or anything like that that you aren't able to answer with it. Sure, will do mate. Thanks. Um, next we've got meetings. So meetings is probably one of the most loved areas of the platform, to be honest. If you're on this call, if you're watching this, you probably have been part of more than your fair share of committee meetings. Um, this I think is one of the areas that a poorly managed um, meeting is a reason why people leave an organization quite frankly. So if a meeting is efficient, effective and snappy, um, people think that you know everyone's on the ball and we're getting home in time for a hot dinner and we're able to see the family before they go off to bed, which is really important. So in here, we have our regular committee meeting. Uh, we do have an integration with Zoom as well. Um, so we can run a meeting exactly like we are now and we share the screen. And you send out your agenda, people attending and apologies uh, um, are automatically uh, recorded as such. And what the secretary does here, which what makes it so neat is that they're sharing this screen and because everyone can see the agenda and they can see what minutes are being recorded, um, the party, uh, the, the meeting goes to plan. So we can go through here, let's say the quiz night um, spoke about booking enough tables, uh, booking a quiz master, uh, Bev, uh, yeah. Cool. So Bev to continue. And our task was book a quiz master. And this is for Bev. And it's for this next week. And the other one was to book more quiz tables. And this one's also for Bev and we'll have this in a few weeks time. So because everyone can see what's going on, it means that Isaac is enough talking about how last year's quiz night was an absolute disaster for 20 minutes. We can get really specific about what we're here to talk about and record the decision and the tasks that need to get done and move on to the next item. As we go through to the, the end of the meeting, we close the meeting. Um, we can, if we really want, we can say that um, Isaac closed the meeting uh, for noting. It took him all of one minute to close the meeting. Uh, next meeting, same time next month, the 22nd, etc. And I can hit save and close. And what the system will do is that it'll automatically format these meeting minutes. So if I, um, and I can share these meetings with an email and the system will automatically format these meeting minutes. So the job is done, all the decisions that we made. So decision here, Bev to continue with quiz planning, all the tasks are all summarized in the summary of matters arising. All these tasks, they've already been emailed out to Bev to get those things done. So for me, I'd shoot from the hip to get things done. Um, this way, the system's keeping a track of it. And when we have a look at the task section soon, uh, we'll be able to see that Bev has all these bits and pieces um, to do with it all, which is incredibly powerful. If you've ever been a secretary, it's, it's 
it's a bit of a game changer and reduces the amount of time to run a meeting by about four hours from our surveys. Next, we have memberships. Um, so you can sell all sort of, obviously all your playing memberships are going through Sports CG, um, but for a lot of other memberships, you might consider using us. So for me, past player memberships, uh, like members, I'd keep a track of in here as well um, and those sorts of things. So really quickly go through, set up my membership name, description, how much it's gonna cost, how often it's gonna repeat, financial category, auto renew. So every 12 months, charge them another $10. I can set up my registration field with all of those um, questions that I went over before. Um, waivers, terms and conditions, I can set up automatically, um, automatic member messaging here. So I can say, welcome Isaac to the membership and those sorts of things. Um, and I can send renewal reminders and, and bits and pieces as well. Uh, if you are um, advertising on Facebook, there's Facebook pixel uh, ID tracking as well, which can be pretty neat uh, with it. And I can also send out digital membership cards as part of it as well. Next, we have web pages. So a lot of basketball associations don't have an up-to-date uh, website. We make it really, really easy to, to set up your web page. Um, so we can set up the home page. Uh, which is fairly straightforward. You pick an image and any information that you want. You can add in sponsors information um, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. And then I can set up all my different web pages. So the various menu structures that I've got here uh, and I can have as many pages as I want in here. Um, so for example, the history page under about us, uh, the idea here is that anyone should be able to update the website. It shouldn't rely on some IT nerd like me um, to update the website. If the history has been updated and you know we won, we we won a flag or, or whatever the case might be, um, anyone should be able to update this information and and make it really really good um, to to share. So you can add all these sorts of details in here. You can limit visibility to specific groups. So some basketball associations want to limit it to just the coaches or just the board so they can use it as a bit of an intranet um, for their organization, which is really powerful as well. And there's a bunch of other settings and you can use your own web domain in here as well. So you can use um, warrigalbasketball.com.au or something like that. And as a result, you get a pretty decent looking um, web page, um, which is all mobile responsive as well, uh, that looks good and is easy to update with it. Next, we have a shop. So you can sell all your merchandise on here and anything else that you want, set up your, your t-shirts or what have you. Variations, so different sizes, colors. Uh, we do very light inventory management. So as someone's buys something that, quantity will drop. Uh, you can adjust visibility. So some basketball clubs um, allow only specific teams to buy specific playing jackets and, and things like that. So you can do that sort of information uh, in here as well. And you can track your orders and um, have various notifications. So for example, uh, for all the t-shirts, Isaac's going to get an email saying Liam's bought a size medium uh, blue t-shirt and he can fulfill that order uh, with it all, which is pretty neat. Next we have storage. So for me, um, the big question was, where's our constitution? Where's our policy docs? Where's our logo, high resolution logo? Uh, the answers for me was our constitution's on a farm three hours outside of town. Our uh, high res logo was with the old screen printers and it was sort of all over the place. We ended up using uh, Dropbox, but Dropbox we needed for Teams, which costs us thousands of dollars a year. So we couldn't actually use it very well. Um, so what we ended up doing was just making this uh, central storage place, which is really neat and easy to use. And you've got 25 gigabytes of storage, which has been uh, more than enough for um, all of these uh, organizations. 
Next, we've got tasks. So tasks is sort of the unsung hero as well. So like I said, assigning a task to an individual is quite straightforward. The secret with tidy is that you can assign it to a role. So this becomes your succession plan. So right now, John is the president. Um, if we go into our admins and roles, and here we can have, again, unlimited roles within the organization. So this is like your organizational chart. If, for example, we have the AGM, John's no longer the, the president and Jordan's taken over. Congratulations, Jordan. And secretary, Isaac's no longer secretary and John has moved back to the secretary role. If I head back into my tasks as John, I've now got all these secretary tasks. So this is the automated succession planning. So it would have been dreamy for me to go into a role in the committee and have 10 things that I knew the dates that they were due. Sports clubs are really good in that there's a natural cadence to them. You've got pre-season, in-season and post-season. Um, so every year I know that I've got to report the numbers to basketball New South Wales and every, um, every year in October, I've got to send the AGM details to BWA and so on and so forth. Uh, this way you can set in all that sort of succession planning um, to go with it, which, which is really neat. And me as president, when I run the committee meetings, I go in here to all the tasks and look at all the overdue bits and pieces and run through them all and understand exactly what's going on. You can also see that this task from the event is automatically in here, as is this task that we just set up in the meeting. So the task is collating all the information from other areas of the platform, like meetings and events into one area. So anyone when they log in at any time of the day can see exactly what's going on for the organization and help each other out to make things happen. And of course, you've got all these reporting annual um, tasks that are due every month or every year or, or what have you that make it a lot easier to, to hand the keys over to the next person that comes after you, which is most important. Finally, we've got apps. So this is where you can choose to, if you've got a UBoot website, we don't wanna be the silver bullet, like stick with WordPress or whatever it is. Uh, and it's optional to switch on in some of these um, various modules. So like web pages and integration to MailChimp, Zoom, Sports TG, uh, you can switch on the shop, use custom domains, all those sorts of things. We call these apps um, and you can switch these on um, as needed um, and as required. So that's Tidy HQ in a big nutshell. Uh, there's obviously a whole lot going on with, um, uh, with the platform. That's because there's a whole lot going on with administrating your basketball organizations. Uh, we can't help it. Um, and hopefully that's been a, a fairly detailed introduction to, to the platform. We do have other webinars going into more depth into each of these sections, um, but hopefully that's a pretty good sort of 101 overview of Tidy HQ. We did have some questions come in, Isaac, and I'm just going to uh, read them out and then answer them as well and get your input on a couple of them too. So um, we have, um, someone was excited by, uh, Linda was excited by the venue limit. Uh, because that's a new feature for us and being able to, to set a, a maximum on that, on that. We were asked about active kids vouchers, uh, which is something that the New South Wales government does online. And I said that was something that we'll be happy to explore for the events section. The um, and just to re-emphasize, there's a lot of other fantastic features. So we might not have that integration initially, but there's a plenty of other stuff for that is useful as a tool. Um, this webinar will be, will be distributed for everyone to be able to have a look at post today. So for those that weren't able to join, we'll be able to have a look. Yep, yeah, we'll stick it up on YouTube so uh, everyone can, can check it out. The question that we did have that I haven't answered was, um, the event setup looks to work for single and multi-day events. Can a, a single event and associated payment be set up for a date time for a set number of weeks? So you could do like an eight-week program through that or? Uh, not particularly. So 
Uh, so that's like a repeating payment, I presume, over eight weeks or something to that effect. Uh, we don't have right now. Um, some groups have set that up as just a you know eight week camp, and they just set it up as a payment that's due on day one, so to speak. Um, but that's probably the workaround that that is best utilised um, for that. So. Uh, just looking at the question, um, yeah, otherwise you could set it up as, um, yeah, an event that happens every week or something like that, but it's probably going to be more administration than what it's worth, to be perfectly um, blunt about it. We, we are setting up um, exploring the, like managing game payments online, given everything that's happened with COVID this year, looking at move that from a cashless environment to an online environment so that would be something where fees are collected every week for for a competition but um i'm just looking at the question here there's been an extra comment added one payment initially but the event date time set for the number of weeks yeah um, so, so maybe alicia we can run over that um after this and uh get into your scenario because it's probably worth us exploring one on one if that's okay I think I'd just end the question section on that note that uh, you can contact us through australia.basketball forward slash TBN support if you have any questions or have anything after exploring Tidy that you'd like added to the solution. Um, you can contact us through that to um, pop your questions in or your feedback on the product. Yeah, great. Um, well, that's, that concludes the, the webinar. Um, thank you very much for attending. Thanks very much for all those questions. Thanks, Liam, for uh, staying on top of it um, so we can keep going through with it. Um, as some of the questions have alluded to, we've been speaking to quite a few of the states about how to roll it out and uh, different states are handling it in different ways, um, but we're working with the states to, to understand the best way um, in each of those jurisdictions or geographies. Um, thanks again for having us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.